There we are. Good to go. Live stream is going. Great. All right, we'll go ahead and start. Megan, if anyone else comes in, would you be willing to be the point person to tell them to grab a pad and a um, band? Yes. That would be awesome. Thank you. Um, sure. Yeah, thank you. That probably helps you with the uh, background noise, huh? I will try and project as best I can. I am going to keep my mask on. So if you have an issue hearing anything, just raise your hand and say, didn't catch that, or please repeat, or whatever. Um, so again, my name is Kimber. I am a personal trainer here. I've been, I'm new to the club, but I'm not new to personal training. So I've been personal training for a little over three years now, but working out and doing a lot of other stuff for at least the last 20 years. <laughs> so really love weightlifting. It's my passion. Um, I got into training because I had a lot of postural issues, orthopedic issues that I had to go to a lot of physical therapy for. And for me, seeing how I could get out of pain and move around in my everyday life as an 18-year-old was really life-changing. And part of why I ended up in training um, to today. And so I like to work on how to move around in your everyday life and stay out of pain. And a lot of that comes consistently down to um, muscle strength not thighs, but just strength, especially on the back side. That is consistently something I see over and over with all of my clients is what we call back chain weakness. So back posture chain, and that's all the muscles on your backside, legs and back included. Um, so a lot of weakness there. And then also just seeing as people age. So one of the things I like to point out, you guys probably know someone, or if you've not already had posture issues yourself, but see people as they age, how they kind of lean over. And leaning over, yes, it's a gravitational pull on them, but it also has a lot to do with the strength of their glutes and hams, not just back strength. Your glutes and hams, picture those like the really strong industrial strength zip ties that then cinch down your low back, helping you stay upright. So that is something that is often missed in a lot of posture classes. People talk about upper body strength and back posture, all very, very important. But if you don't have your glutes and hams to anchor you down and pull you upright, there's only so far you're ever going to get or be able to maintain. So um, first thing we'll cover, so on the back specifically, there are a lot of muscles on the back, right? So ones I primarily am going to focus on today, first of all, and this is, again, clearly my very <laughs> anatomically correct drawing today, um, but lats, which is short for latissimus dorsi. Those are really the biggest muscle on your back, starting up around your shoulder blades and running basically the whole length down. So if you ever see big bodybuilder guys that have got that V shape to their top, that's because they have big built lats. I have biggish lats maybe for a female, so I'm really very wide up here because of my lat strength. Next is the traps or trapezius. Most people think trapezius is just up here. That is your upper trap. Your trapezius is a diamond shape or a kite shaped muscle that goes up into the upper neck, down to the top of your shoulders, shoulder blades, and then it kind of comes to a V in between the middle or lower part of your shoulders. I'm going to focus on more the middle and lower trapezius. And then underneath that, which is why it's kind of highlighted there, is the rhomboids. Rhomboids are small muscles in between your shoulder blade and your spine that are responsible for folding your shoulder blades against your spine. So really helping you open up that chest, that has a lot to do with your rhomboids. So being able to peel your shoulder blades back, folding them against the spine. I also like to say picture your, rom or your shoulder blades like butterfly wings trying to fold against the core. Your rhomboids is what makes that retraction of those wings um, possible. So do those all lay on top of whatever's right next to your spine? Yep, and then what's right next to your spine is your erector spinaeus, or your erectors is what they're called. And so for they're short. underneath all of that? They're under, yeah, they're underneath most of that. I don't remember the exact layering with where your erectors are, but they're all kind of layered on top of that. Your erectors would run then the whole length of your spine underneath, or at least on top of your um, traps and rhomboids. But yeah, your erectors are the long, skinny muscles that kind of stabilize your spine that way. So, good question. Um, next up, glutes. So when I say glutes, it stands
stands for gluteus maximus, is the main bubble of your butt, and then hams or hamstrings, so the back side here. So we're going to go over a few moves today. Um, first of all, your hinge. So I guess there is enough sticks for everyone. If everyone wants to grab one of those dowels, Steph, this is going to just seem like basic review for you. Oh, this perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Let me demo this real quick and then I'll have you guys line up and try the same thing. So anytime we're doing a hinge, so this a hinge is literally hinging at the hips or bending forward. Also in any sort of workout class, it might be called a deadlift. A deadlift is a hinge pattern. So what I'm gonna have you do, and again, go ahead and just watch first and then you can do it yourself. You're gonna hold this up along your spine. One hand up here at the top of your head. The other hand here, and I want this really, truly to kind of run down your butt crack. Um, and I want it overhand. Don't do underhand grip. I don't want a false connection with your back. I want overhand grip. What'd you say? Tuck that sucker in there. Yes. <laughs> you keep doing it, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. right? Um, so, holding that there, I want three points of contact. Underneath where my hand is is my sacrum, right? So at the bottom of our spine is our sacrum that's kind of in between our butt cheeks at the bottom of our spine. So we want contact with our sacrum, contact here in the middle of my back, and then I'm just holding this up here. So from the side, if I bend over with what is neutral spine, so again, I'm not bending out of the spine, I'm making the glutes and the hands work to lift my torso. Neutral spine, I shouldn't lose any points of contact. Yes, you can see it come off the bottom here, but that's below my sacrum. I'm not losing that contact. You guys can see that there. I'm not losing that contact. This can also be done at home if you have a broom handle, mop stick, anything like that, that will totally suffice. Just something long, and straight about three to four feet. So go go ahead and place. I'm gonna walk around and kind of check everyone's hinge in this. Ah. And we're not losing our um, You're not losing your place of contact. Oh, my hands are tight. And also Really, just be moving 
forward and backward. So if I'm going to hold this here, as much as I can hold it still, my hips should be moving on a fairly like horizontal plane, where you can see it kind of lined up with the mirror, versus an elevation change, that's more of a squat and could also be a reason why you're losing that hinge. One other way to tell, if everyone wants to grab a section of wall space, so grab a section of wall space, and the mirrors are attached, so if you want to go up against the mirror, you can. We're not going to be doing any major um, body contact here. So for some people, I always like to find there's going to be some, one way that translates better than another for a hinge. Another way to translate a hinge is being about a, about a foot distance away from the wall. So I'm going to put my heel to the wall, mark that spot with my other foot, yep, and then step hip width distance apart. So I'm about my foot length away from the wall. And you can set your dowels down for this. You don't need them. If I am hinging properly, my butt should hit the mirror, feet in full contact. Yep, without tipping back. So yeah, these are called the wall butt taps. So just tap the wall, back. Tap the wall, and back. Great, so wait, good, I, I need a big squat to do that. You shouldn't need one. So scooch back, just like two inches. There you go, okay. Okay. I'll so soft that. knees, but now don't squat, don't drop your hips, bend forward. So send your hips back, there you go, and then stand. Yeah, much better. Good. You guys all getting the butt taps over there? So one thing that we'll, people will often try and do is get like a false positive by then just, you know, <laughs> doing this and then tipping into the wall. So I want to make sure feet stay nice and grounded. Think of it this way too. If my chest is still moving forward, my hips should be moving back. That's also where people will end up bending out of the low back is that they are moving their chest forward, but their hips have stopped. And now I'm rounding out of my low back. So if my chest is moving forward towards the ground, my hips should be moving back. And if my hips have reached their end point, now I should feel it get tighter and tighter and tighter down the back chain of my legs. Stretchy, stretchy hamstrings that I have, I can pretty much go parallel to the ground doing a hinge because I can get that extension from my hamstrings. Does that make sense? Any questions there? Everyone get some good butt taps in on the wall? Good. We're all ready to put on the ritz. <laughs> okay, so that is a couple ways to check your hinge. Checking it with a dowel or a broom, and then butt taps on a wall. And again, I usually have to cheat a little bit. I have really big feet, so I'll like scooch my heels back like an inch to, towards the wall. But really, for most the average women, you should be able to be between eight to 10 inches. Your heels should be eight to 10 inches away from the wall, hinging and being able to like tap, tap, tap. So it's also just a good warm up. If you're gonna do any deadlift motion, anything, honestly, even yard work this time of year, <laughs> making sure, okay, I'm gonna warm up my hinge and make sure that I am loading my glutes and my hamstrings to initiate that lift, not my low back. Next thing, this is where your mat comes into play, is glute bridge. So this is still gonna be focused on hamstrings and glutes. So again, I'll set up and then you guys can kind of get down and um, try it out for yourself. So glute bridge, I'm gonna be laying on the ground, back nice and flat, heels in towards my butt, legs up this way. I wanna drive out of my heels using then my hamstrings and then my glutes to raise my hips. Notice you can also get, again, a false positive by just tilting your pelvis and arching into your back. Again, I want to keep that neutral spine, keep that pelvis slightly tilted to my face, hitting with my belly button. And ideally, I want to be one line from the side. And then down, and then up, and down. And then you, if you're not sure you can feel your hamstrings, hang out at the top for a second. Can I feel my hamstrings engage? Can I feel my glutes engage? Okay, good. So go ahead and get in position. Go ahead and try that. Nice. Yep. Good, Leslie. Raise your hand if you're feeling your hams and your glutes. If 
you're feeling them activate, not just feeling them with your hands. Great. <laughs> okay. Just thought I should clarify. <laughs> you're like, yep, feel them. Are you feeling them? is important than this. If you are not feeling it in the backside and maybe you're quad dominant, your feet could be too far out. So bringing your heels in closer to your butt. So, you know, if I'm bent like this and my feet are way out here, I might need to bring those heels in. The other thing too is even just lifting the toes up. Lifting the toes up and make sure that you're initiating out of the heel. That's also important in a lot of any leg posture movement is if you're going to be initiating the drive out of your heels, you're more likely to activate the back side. If you're initiating the drive out of your toes, you're more likely to activate the front side. Do you feel that difference, Leslie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Leslie just tried doing a glute bridge up out of her toes. Yep, <laughs> Claire's doing it. I don't think I've ever had a teacher cue me to ever try that. Yeah, and not that we well, want to do that. They want us to do the other thing. They do. It's nice for you to get that sensation because I feel that that muscle memory will be more, I don't know, solid knowing that. That's the same thing with the leg press out there, any sort of like lunge move, anything like that. If you're putting weight in your toe, it's going to be quad dominant and often cause more stress on the knee. So let's shift that weight back, drive out of the heel. What did you say? That totally makes sense though. Yeah. Totally sense. Yep. Uh -huh. Totally. Totally. That's one thing I love to show people on. <laughs> The leg press machine is actually have a lot of people get on the leg press and place their feet right in the middle right underneath their feet and they press 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 if you scoot your feet up to where your toes are off that top ledge it's going to be way more hamstring and glute dominant physiology is cool you what physiology is cool it's super cool so right amazing. and it's just something to think in mind like okay if the purpose of this exercise is a glute exercise or a hamstring exercise, and these are the muscles I'm supposed to be moving, it doesn't make sense to be then kind of tipping into my toes, right? It also just makes for a very unstable and unsafe move. Okay, go ahead and stand up. The rest of this class is gonna be standing up so you can scoot your mat aside or we've got plenty of space, you can kind of stay spread, spread where you are. Okay, next thing is the lat, what I call the citrus squeeze with clients. Again, stuff is probably gonna be very familiar to you. So your latissimus dorsi, one of the ways that you can activate that in everyday movements is by doing what we call like an external rotation of the humerus. Humerus is the top arm bone. We externally rotate that. We end up with these palm up position. So palm up position, squeeze your elbows into your sides. So look like this, about to go serve everyone martinis, right? <laughs> um, from here, I want to make sure Roll shoulders up, back, and down. Shoulders up, back, and down. Squeezing those elbows into that side. And now, picture your favorite citrus. Tangerine, lemon, grapefruit. Picture you have a half of one of those under each armpit. And squeeze the juice out of it. Pushing your chest out of the middle. Squeeze the juice. You should feel this back bra area tightening and engaging and pulling back. So you can literally just stand here and Engage your lats. Squeeze the citrus. Squeeze the citrus. <laughs> and then you try and pull them together. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. just in, but yep. in and it's, Yep, so pulling them in together, creating a lot of tension in this thing. And you can kind of see when I do it, my chest naturally raises and my shoulders naturally drop just a little bit. Squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Yeah. Yeah, and you can do it. I mean, to turn it on, I just want you to make sure you feel and, and understand on your body where are my lats located. Again, for most women, it's going to be in this back bra area, starting underneath that armpit or wrapping around that back side of the rib cage in this section. Is everyone kind of feeling it there? Yeah. Everyone got their citrus squeezing on? <laughs> what are you making with that squeeze citrus? Lemonade. 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 Yeah, that's it? <laughs> I was thinking, you know, vodka soda, some variety. <laughs> okay, so last, that.
that is one way to turn them on. Also, if you're doing any sort of rowing motion, um, so if you're on a rowing machine or on one of the cable machines, just doing an underhand grip will engage your lats more. So changing that up will help because again, your lats are the biggest muscle on the back of your body, or on the back of your back, right? Not on the back of your body. We got glutes and lats, but lats. So again, working that is gonna help with overall long-term posture. They're also beneath that whole shoulder complex that's gonna help our shoulders stay back and down. Bend over rows, right? Bend like a row. Yeah, yeah, so bend over row, cable row, anything. To work a little bit more lats, switch it to an underhand grip. Got it? All right, next thing, banded pull aparts. Go ahead and pick up your bands. So just to talk about when you're doing it over view, uh -huh. is it working more upper shoulder plus lats? It's a little bit lat. It's gonna work the same shoulder mus yeah. muscles like rear deltoids, some rhomboids, things like so that. when you're doing the typical, mm -hmm. it's, it get, it's both. Backside, yes. But underhand will be lats a little bit more. Okay. Um, and try it, next time you do yeah. it, literally, just try it. And honestly, even here, you can try it with the band, overhand versus underhand. And again, the big thing is keeping your elbows in close and picture you're squeezing that citrus in your armpit. And again, you should feel that engage a little bit more there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is banded pull-aparts. These banded pull-aparts are really good ex exercise for you to isolate and feel where your rhomboids are. So again, I want an underhand grip, just, and we're just grabbing the, the gumby part, the uh, stretchy part of the band, not the handles necessarily. And you want to hold it out in front, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, at about shoulder height, right? And not up here, we don't want to shrug, relax the shoulders. And then from here, you're going to keep the arms nice and wide, straighten out the arms, lock the arms, great, beautiful, great. Pull apart, pull that band all the way to your chest, getting your arms to parallel, and then back with control. And squeeze, and back. And squeeze, good, excellent. And again, watching yourself in the mirror, making sure that as you pull back, you're not shrugging into that pull and activating those upper traps. It's really, uh, common for the upper trapeziest to pop in this move, mostly because most of us carry a lot of tension there anyways. They're already very neuromuscular activated. They're the brown noser of the upper body. They want to be the first on the spot, answer their hand, <laughs> raise your shoulder. Don't let them do that. Again, work on that shoulder back and down, nice and wide, squeezing that. And again, if you want to try a little bit more tension, you can bring your hands closer to on the band. Really working that out much tension as you can handle. And again, at home, if you don't have a band, if you have maybe a longer um, exercise band like this, it's kind of the long skinny ones, you can just grab one single end of it there and pull back and open. So that's a really good one to isolate the rhomboids to make sure where they are. Or again, in a deadlifting pattern, a lot of times people think, you know, oh, if I'm deadlifting a barbell or a bag of garden soil, I'm just picking it up like this, right? Well, now we want to make sure there are hinges in place, right? I'm not running on the back. But also, I'm going to brace with my upper back because if I let this bag of soil or this deadlift or this kettlebell or barbell, whatever you're lifting from the ground, maybe a dog that's injured, <laughs> truly, like you want to engage your upper back because if my back starts to round here while I am loaded down here, it's going to eventually transfer down here. So even here, I want to squeeze those shoulders back and down before I lift that load. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's where upper body strength is like super important in lifting a load. Yes, your glutes and hamstrings will finish the job, but your upper body's got to keep that in line so that it doesn't end up rounding your back as you pull forward. All right. Okay, five minutes left. Um, last thing, we actually don't even need anything for this. Need your body, need your arms, and knowledge of the alphabet. Everyone know the alphabet? Oh, no. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's it. No, okay. So, everyone remember YMCA, how we spell the letters out with that, right? Um, we are going to do I, Y, T. So, this is I, this is Y, 
and this is T, right? So practice this again. I, Y, T. Great. Now we're going to do that bent over, loading all those little muscles between our shoulders and our upper back that we just talked about. So I'll show you from the side. We're going to bend over again, working on our hinge, making sure we're not rounding out of the back here. And we're going to go I, Y, T. And then reverse. T, Y, I. Go back and forth into that. You'll feel how that transfers. Oh, it's kind of transferred from upper back to middle back to lower back. So go ahead and bend so over. What are you doing with your palms down? Palms can just go down facing the ground. So I or together, whatever you're more comfortable with. If you want the yoga energy, palms together is fine. Y, T, good. Good. Okay. In your, in your eye, are you stretching out or are you still trying to You still, that's a down. really good question. Yes, in your eye, you still want to keep your scapula, your shoulder blades, down and retracted. You don't want to get that false eye, again, because here's the brown nose or the upper trapezius that just, I got it, I got it. <laughs> nope. Simmer down. Pull it down. Pack those shoulder blades. <laughs> okay, so now that y'all have that, now I want you to try IYT separately. So it's real kind of, yeah, it's real kind of easy once you're like here to just kind of like sail through this, pretend we're swimming in the abyss, right? So I want you to go I, arms down, reset. Y, arms down. And each time you're lifting your arms, squeezing your shoulder blades. Again, picture those butterfly wings, especially in that T. Butterfly wings folding against my shoulders. Y, it's a little bit of that butterfly wings and shoulders down. And then I, it's literally just working, pulling that retraction down. So try separating those letters. So I, yep, and then arms down, and then Y, and then arms down, and then T. Good, do it again. I, reset, Y, reset, as I asked you to, and then T. <laughs> Yeah. Is everyone feeling kind of how that transfers to different parts of your same upper back section in those different letters? So once that becomes fairly comfortable, and this is a hard move, especially for women, we don't have a ton of upper body strength unless we really focused on that. So start by doing three sets of IYT. So one IYT, one set. IYT, that's two. Three sets of five is a really good starting point. Once you feel that that becomes pretty easy, grab the tiny one pound dumbbells and do IYT with the little dumbbells. Once that becomes, I mean, literally I do this exercise to this day and I don't use anything heavier than eight. You're focusing on all these tiny, small muscles that just don't get used a lot in any big way in our posture. Any questions, you guys? That's kind of the end of what I had and we're at the end of our time. And feel free if you want to stay after and have like specific like, can you check this or wasn't sure on this? But any questions that might be helpful for the group, I'd be happy to answer now. That was awesome. Yeah, that was great. Thank Everyone's you. sleeping. Hopeful. Anyone that's home, they're all asleep. No, I'm kidding. I can see in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My other thing, because I do lean forward. Uh huh. Just really head in line all the time. So I was going to keep. As much as you can. Ahead. So another. That is a good question. As much as you can, even just doing posture work. Okay, up against the wall. My butt's on the wall, my shoulder's on the wall, my head's on the wall. And standing there for a minute or two. And again, making sure that if I'm up against the wall, I'm not butt up against the wall because I'm doing the Instagram butt and knees locked out or trying to do this, right? I want to keep soft knees, pelvis tilted. Again, we don't want that bucket spilling forward. Pelvis tilted, belly button pinned in. Yeah, everyone grab a little wall space. And see, okay, I can get my butt and shoulders there, but even me, I have a little bit of head forward. So then just learning to relax here. Again, don't try and be creating too much tension or stress in your neck. Can I do that? Can I keep soft knees, pelvis tilted towards my face, shoulders there, and the back this of my head? Wall shape humor. <laughs> <laughs> so rounded forward and honestly this is in, in most of my training with clients I don't hardly ever do any sort of chest press um, any fly movement like this until we've really stretched this out and strengthened this 
then I will add in press. See, I, I pay a lot of attention up here because, like you said, brown others. <laughs> but um, I, I always thought used to think, oh, I need to stretch, I need to do this. But the more I open up my chest and pull it back, I'm like, oh, I need to strengthen back here. Yes. Because I, I keep it stretched out all the time. Yeah. On the top. And that's often that's why, good. that's a really good point. That's often why we're so, it's overactive because everything here is so weak. It's literally mm. struggling. I read a statistic yesterday that said for every inch that your head is forward, that your head is forward over neutral spine, so it's on a neutral spine from the side, for every inch my head is forward over neutral spine, it's an extra 10 pounds of pull on my neck muscles. So you wanna talk about tension headaches, why we're not sleeping, teeth grinding, all of these things, and back pain. So, yeah. I nice. hope that's super helpful. Again, feel free to save awesome. the individual things that you want checked out. But thank you so much for attending today. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. That was awesome. Yeah, I that's one thing I always have to work on. Posture, posture, yeah. posture, posture. Oh. Can you leave those up for one second and I do it? Oh, I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Do I hit X? Yep. I forgot my notes because you're here. Oh, end stream. There we go. End stream. I did it. That's my bad. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, we can never leave. You're never leaving. You're in this forever now.